Welcome to this teaser for our paper Atom Strapdown towards integrated quantum inertia navigation systems. My name is Benjamin Tenstedt and I'm part of the QGIRO project team in which we are currently developing a six degrees of freedom quantum inertia navigation system. In GNSS denied environment, inertia navigation is a method of choice for high short-term accuracy of the kinematic state. But since the solution drifts fast because of integrated errors, we want to apply atom interferometry in order to reduce the drift and keep the advantage of an autonomous sensor system. Atom interferometry measures a phase shift between two atomic states with different momentum. This phase shift then yields information about linear accelerations and angular rates. However, it's difficult to apply this sensor to terrestrial navigation in the dynamic environment since the values of interest are changing over time and we also have the phase ambiguity problem, which leads to a rather small dynamic range of the sensor. The phase shift can be related to the position of the atoms. We propose to use high-rate sensors like conventional IMUs to resolve the dynamics and get a prediction of the phase shift that we are going to expect. And this also solves the ambiguity issue. The kinematic equations are very similar to those of the standard strapdown algorithm and hence the name atom strapdown. The atom strapdown can be implemented in a higher level navigation system. Here we use an aerostate EKF which fuses the prediction with the actual signal of the interferometer in the observation space. This allows to estimate the bias of the accelerometers and gyroscopes and thus reduce the long-term drift of the solution. We still have to consider that the errors in the data of the IMU lead to a wrong prediction. This drift of the phase prediction might still be too large to solve the ambiguity and this is further magnified by a level between the sensors which leads to fictitious force terms that scale with the distance. And this is in fact a trade-off that includes the choice of quality of the conventional sensors and the distance between the systems. And for this, we give some general guidance in the paper. Also interesting is the impact of trajectory dynamics on the performance of the solution. So in this first example, we have a smooth trajectory and here you don't see any problems. We have an improvement of two orders of magnitude in the accuracy as well as the prediction of the solution. However, if we have a scenario with large dynamics involved, like this acceleration spike at 26 seconds, you already see that the accuracy of the gyro bias estimate is decreasing, and furthermore, the velocity estimate is getting much worse after we initially had an improvement like in the uh, smooth example from before. The, impl the implications of this are elaborated and discussed in the paper. If you have further questions, you can re reach me via email. Our paper is published in an upcoming issue of Navigation, so if you're interested, please check it out. That's all. Thanks for your attention.